welcome back to another 30 before 30 video. Now, in case you can't tell by my get up, my little scarf, my little jumper, today we are going to be talking about something Harry Potter themed. Now, the newbies amongst you may not know that I am actually a very, very big fan of Harry Potter. And although I've mentioned Harry Potter quite a lot on my podcast over the last couple of years, but one question that I do get asked a lot and that I've never actually answered, I don't think, or at least not in detail, is what is my favourite Harry Potter book? And I thought this would be an interesting kind of question to discuss in a little bit more detail on one of these videos. So I've got myself cosied up in our little book corner here. I have all of my original copies of Harry Potter here with me and I'm going to talk you through my favourites. From my least favourite all the way through to my number one favourite. A little disclaimer, I will not be including Harry Potter and the Cursed Child in this kind of favourites roundup of Harry Potter books, and that's because I don't consider it as a book, I consider it as a play, and I consider it as quite separate. I know that people can be a little bit divided over Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, and so I'm sticking to the original seven books um, for my little favourites roundup today. Oh, but actually, before we jump in, there's going to be serious spoilers about all of the Harry Potter books, obviously, in this favourites roundup. And I feel okay about doing that because, guys, these books have been out for a while now. And if you haven't read them by now, I'm afraid it's your fault if you get a spoiler. But I will be um, dropping some, some truth bombs about what goes on in these books. So if you haven't yet read them, why not? And perhaps move on to another video rather than getting spoiled, you know? It's your funeral. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right in with my seventh favourite of the Harry Potter books. This bad boy is my least favourite of the seven, not to say that I didn't enjoy it, but it definitely didn't have a huge amount of appeal in comparison to the others, and that was Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I remember incredibly distinctly when this book originally came out. I remember as a child being utterly horrified that this book was even bigger than the one that came before it. That is to say it was exciting because there was more book to read, but um, Goblet of Fire was a little bit of a struggle as well, and um, this really didn't help it. Now the reason that this book is coming in at number seven is for me it was very distinctly a filler book. It was setting up a lot of ideas that were going to go through to fruition in later books. It was embellishing storylines but not really giving us anything more, there wasn't any real satisfaction. Plus the angst in this book, oh my goodness you guys, it still frustrates me when I read this or I listen to the Stephen Fry audiobook. I really, really, really dislike Harry's behaviour, Ron's behaviour and Hermione's behaviour in this book. Too much angst and it just doesn't work for me. Some benefits that it does have, um, I loved the introduction of the probably the most evil character of all time, which is Professor Umbridge. I love to hate a villain, so she was one of those characters that I utterly despised but couldn't get enough of. But it also involved the death of one of my favourite characters in the series, Sirius Black. So, was never going to be particularly happy with this one. Definitely my least favourite of the seven. So from that description of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, you probably know what's going to be coming in at number six in my favourites of the Harry Potter books. And yes, it's Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This book is kind of conflicted in terms of why it is at number six and not higher up. And that is because when I read it, I hated all of the Quidditch World Cup stuff. I am not a sports person, and although Quidditch is incredibly more preferable to any other kind of sport that we currently have in the muggle world. Reading it I found very very dry. When I listened to the Stephen Fry audiobook, which you are going to hear me mention quite a few times, I absolutely love the Quidditch World Cup. It's one of those things that is transformative by having someone read it to you, but I remember reading that was very very difficult so this was a bit of a slow starter for me. I also didn't really like 
the whole Tri Wizard tournament with the introduction of additional schools and additional characters. It was fine, but I felt like it was unnecessary filler. And so, again, that kind of put it as a kind of kind of book for me. I wanted to further the story with what was going on with Harry and Voldemort and all of that. I didn't necessarily want to have all of these new additional characters in. That isn't to say I disliked any of them because in general it's a great story. The Triwizard Tournament gives this book a really really clear structure which is great so you kind of know where you're going. Uh, you also have the the whole story and the big reveal at the end when um, Barty Crouch's son is not dead. He has been alive all of the time and and he was Professor Moody and that is one of the best twists in a book that I have ever read. I was so shocked at this twist that I automatically went back and read the book again and had a completely different understanding of it the second time. So from that perspective it's great but it just doesn't hold um, as much a place in my heart as some of the others and yeah it was a victim I think of being a really hefty book again that could have maybe done with a tad bit more editing. Just saying. <laughs> Coming in at number five in terms of my favourites of the Harry Potter books is this classic, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Now, it's funny doing this roundup of books really and favouriting them and kind of dissing some of them because let's be honest, every single one of these books I, I love and I could read again and again and again and again. But this one, let's be honest, it's kind of just the same book as book one with additional bits and pieces. It's it, it was very much what was to be expected of a Harry Potter book. It starts off with the muggles and everyone's unhappy, they go to Hogwarts and bad things happen and at the end they all go home for summer holidays. That's basically the structure of this one and of the two original books I do prefer the first one. The thing I love about Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is all of the kind of backstory starting the backstory rather of Tom Riddle. I think that that's fascinating. I also love that there are more of the Weasleys included in this book. We go to the burrow for the first time. We really feel that wizarding family dynamic which we never had in the original book. Um, but yeah, it kind of, to be perfectly honest, it is tied along with my fourth place. They're really very, very equal, but number four is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. The Philosopher's Stone, you guys. I go by the correct titles of these books, not the silly Sorcerer's Stone version, it's the Philosopher's Stone. I'm really bitter about the fact that they changed the title to the Sorcerer's Stone for the US. I really, to this day, do not understand why. But yes, this definitely comes in at number four for me. And it just holds a very, very dear place in my heart, as I've said about the majority of these books so far. I was fascinated with this book when I read it for the first time. Mostly I remember very, very clearly the descriptions of Diagon Alley when Harry visits for the first time, and the descriptions of Hogwarts um, during the kind of first feast and the sorting that happens. It's just, oh, it is a magical story. And I think it really does set up the world brilliantly well, and it's just, it's just a very, very special story. We're getting into the top three now, you guys. This is when I think that people will start to become more divided because there are some of these books that I love a lot more than the majority of other people, at least so I found. So let me kind of talk you through my top three and exactly why they are my top three. So it's dramatic now. Okay, coming in at third place is going to be Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, number seven, the final book in the series of Harry Potter. Oh, I loved this book. I read this book on the plane back from America and we were doing a kind of overnight flight, I remember, and I just cried through the entire thing. I cried from when Hedwig dies towards the beginning of the book all the way through to the end. I know that a lot of people have beef with the epilogue. I don't. I personally think that it's beautifully written as it is, separating it from Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And if you haven't seen the play version of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, you're not really going to appreciate it for what it is. I loved the play. But yeah, it's a beautiful book. Much, much better than the film versions of this book. 
Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part one is one of the worst adaptations of a book that I've ever seen. But yeah, in terms of books, it is wonderful. And I genuinely think JK Rowling is one of the only authors that I have read um, a large series of books and not been disappointed with how she's tied up the loose ends. What's going to be number one and number two? <laughs> so this is interesting because these two books, for the longest time, my number two was definitely number one in my eyes, but then things change. So you can kind of guess what I'm gonna say because my number two, my second place, is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. And this is for fairly obvious reasons. I think it's all to do with Sirius Black. I absolutely adore Sirius Black as a character. I love the fact that when he was introduced it was as a villain and he ended up being this family for Harry. Again, the twists in this book had me going nuts. The fact that Peter Pettigrew is still alive and he's been Scabbers the Rat, who we've been reading about for the past two books. These kind of revelations had never happened to me in literature when I read the, these books for the first time. So that leads me on to my number one favourite of all time of the Harry Potter books, and that is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Oh my goodness, this book destroyed me when I read it. My number one favourite character in Harry Potter besides Sirius Black would have to be Severus Snape. One of the reasons that I enjoyed Deathly Hallows so much is that it really looks into how Snape is not in fact a villain at all and how he is probably the bravest person that you read about in Harry Potter. But Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince and the revelation that Snape is in fact the Half-Blood Prince, it was incredible. I also think that in, in the same way that books three and four start setting up stories, this book really starts fulfilling on those promises that have been set up by the previous two stories, and so I felt like I was finally getting something back um, when I was reading this story. It's a very, very special book, and it deals with very real, raw emotion, and I adore it. Genuinely, if I can only read one Harry Potter book forever, it would it would have to be Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Best books ever! <laughs> so yeah guys, those are my favourites in terms of Harry Potter, my seven to one in terms of rating for these books. Let me know what your thoughts are on these books. I'd really be interested if you have um, a different lineup of favourites to me. Um, we could get into a discussion as to which book you like. Do you really disagree um, with my choices? Um, whatever, they're all fabulous books. So whichever one is your favourite, I recommend that you sit down and reread it again. I definitely think I want to reread the Half-Blood Prince again. To be honest, I just want to read all of them again, but that's just me pretty much every day of my life. But that is all for now. I hope you all have a great day and I'll check in with you again soon. Bye.